Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Game Builder Garage. I am Link, and I'm going to show you exactly how to draw something really cool in your level using the texture editor. If we head into the texture node on, you'll notice the texture face is up here really easy. Change which direction it's facing. And you can also change the size with these. The position, you probably don't want to use these from here. It would get confusing. But what we really want to look at is over here. So we have our palette wheel and you can reset the colors if you want. We need to use these to create our textures. Now if we zoom in, we can see that there are eight big hey. boxes across and eight big boxes up and down. Even further, when you draw in this zoomed in mode, which I highly encourage you to do for making pixel art, you'll notice you have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these fill one box. If you know your math, that means that 64 pixels across and 64 pixels up and down. This is going to be crucial for doing some cool art. And actually, let's head over to PowerPoint to do the next part. Now, here we have a picture I found from the internet. And it's nice and pixelated, but if it wasn't, I can show you guys later how to do it yourself. And when you count these pixels from top to bottom, you find that there's a total of 23 pixels. Now we need to see how those 23 pixels would fit into our eight boxes. If you know your math, it's not going to be a square number. So we need to leave a little blank space with one pixel at the bottom. Let's go ahead and go into insert table. And we are going to make an 8x8 table in order to mimic what we have in Game Builder Garage. Go to Table Design, and we're going to put it like this, and then go into Layout, and make them the same size, 7.5 inches. <laughs> if you don't use inches, then you can just make it the size of the slide, wherever you're living if you use centimeters as well. And we're going to put this over here, and you can also align both of these in the center if you would like. Now in this case, since it's 23, or basically 24 and 16, each one of these big squares is going to have nine little squares inside of it. And this is going to make it much easier to draw in the Game Builder Garage. You can also just keep this thing saved on your computer, pull it up whenever you need it, and everything is perfectly centered. And it makes your life a whole lot easier for drawing these. Let's go back into Game Builder Garage and start drawing just a little bit so you can see what it's all about. All right, we're back in Game Builder Garage in the note on again. So let's go ahead and zoom in just one time. Head to a corner to find a good reference. Then count over one, two, three, four squares. This is going to be the middle. Now, according to my reference, I'm going to need about two pixels in each direction. But remember, each pixel is nine of these little squares. So that is one pixel right there. And we're going to go ahead and draw one, two, three here. And that'll be about the same. To make it quicker on the other side, we'll just, we know that three plus three is six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Go down. Now it's three tall. Then go on over, and if you're doing a lot of these at a time, you can just use the fill bucket, and that'll make your life a lot easier. From here, you just keep looking at the reference and going back and forth, occasionally zooming out, making sure that you got everything correct, and you can start working with different colors. I would set your palette even before you get started to have the right colors, and just work your way down using your reference every once in a while, and you can make some really awesome textures. It's also worth mentioning that if you Google the sprite that you want to use, you can look through these and you'll notice at the top sometimes they'll have this option called grid. And if you click on it, you can actually find some pictures with the grids on them like this. That might save you in some cases, but I'm not sure this will be available for all games. Looks like there's plenty for A Link to the Past. But if there's not any for your game, then you can use what I showed you to make them. Here you'll notice I made the A Link to the Past link, and once you have these, you can actually use those to create walking animations and all that stuff just by adjusting little parts of the texture. So here I just created some little feet for him, and they don't have to be perfectly one pixel. That's the nice thing about having nine little dots making up a pixel, is you can make much smoother pictures, you can smooth things out. So from using that method, I was able to create this one as well as these other ones. This was actually the first attempt I had at doing it, and I just did one pixel for each. But when I tried to stretch it out, it was super problematic, even though it looks pretty nice. So you can add the shield, and you can do this if you want to do some other awesome stuff. It's pretty easy to move things around when you're using the pixels. Let's go ahead and show you guys how you can create something like this. Now in order to import complex characters into Game Builder Garage, we are going to need to use a 
pixelizer to pixelfy something. I don't know if these are real words, but there is a website called Given to Fly. I will put a link to it in the description. It's the best one that I could find. So when you load up the picture, it's going to have block sizes and you can adjust this to make your own block sizes if you'd like to make less pixels. You can drag it all the way down to one and this is what Link would look like if he had five pixels right there. Uh, five by two pixels. And as you drag it to the right a little bit, it gets a little bit more and a little bit more pixels until you get around 64. If you want to make it really nice, obviously you want to keep using more and more pixels. It does take a lot more time though, is the only difficult thing. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and download the image and go through a similar process as before. I must warn you, the picture I created is time consuming. This picture right here looks pretty nice, but I think it took me about an hour and a half to zoom in and do each little thing, even using the reference, so it definitely can be difficult. But if you're looking to make a really fancy texture and game, then it's definitely worth the time. Now a word of warning before you go off and create these fancy textures. It is really difficult with the 3D looking textures to make them look good. We can add some walking animations and stuff, but even that's going to be a little bit more difficult than using the 2D animations. So on the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the easiest way I know so that you can create your own walking animations and make things look even nicer. If you like this tutorial, then make sure to subscribe and leave a like down below. Till next time, take care and God bless.